Law & Order, one of the longest-running legal dramas on the small screen, premiered way back in 1990 and spanned across 20 seasons. Then came the many spin-offs. If you hadn't noticed, Law & Order has more spin-off series than most original shows have total seasons. The question is, which of the franchise's series has managed to win over fans the most? Join us as we list down the best spin-offs of the Law & Order universe. At number 7, we have Law & Order Trial by Jury. This spin-off can easily be called as Dick Wolf's biggest misses. Lasting just one season, that too a very short one with only 13 episodes, it's safe to say that Law & Order Trial by Jury did not appeal to the fandom at all. Many believe that the famous crime drama is largely made to prevent overreaching. And by the looks of it, Wolf and his team religiously follow that formula, trying to minimize the risk of errors on the show. But is there something like playing it too safe? Trial and Jury was guilty of striving for originality while imitating too much of the previous shows. The show basically stretched the trial part of the show, which typically only takes up half a Law & Order episode, into 13 full episodes. Don't get us wrong, the idea seemed pretty interesting, it just didn't play out like fans had hoped. At the end of the day, the series revolved just a little too much around the monotony of jury procedures. Another reason why Trial by Jury failed with the fans is because they had to wait eight long months for the season finale to air. Now that's some cliffhanger, and that's why this spinoff lands at the bottom of our list. Next, we have Law & Order True Crime. True Crime isn't blatantly bad, it just didn't work. This spin-off series introduced an interesting new wrinkle in the drama franchise. In theory, each season of the series was supposed to take up a famous real-life crime and dramatize it on screen. The first, and the only series, aired for eight episodes, which followed the truly disturbing Menendez murders. As we said before, it wasn't objectively bad, it had its moments. We mean, watching Edie Falco deliver a memorable performance in that wig was one of the few pleasures of the show. In fact, the actor even earned an Emmy nomination for her role as the relentlessly intriguing criminal defense attorney Leslie Abramson. However, that is exactly where the problem lay for Law & Order True Crime. It was only a great show to watch when Falco was on the screen, and that's why it rests at the bottom of our list with Trial by Jury. At number 5, we have Law & Order Los Angeles. The Law & Order franchise took a few pages from the successful run of L.A. Law and decided to take the show for a spin in La La Land. While L.A. Law itself lasted a few good years, years from 1986 to 1994, Law and Order Los Angeles didn't last anywhere near that long. The insanely hyped West Coast spin-off of the Wolf's East Coast franchise didn't meet the fans' expectations. The show premiered back in 2010, just when the original gripping Law and Order drew the curtains after 20 long years. It was meant to be a fresh start, something for the fans to hold on to after they had parted ways with their long-running favorite show. The series focused on criminal offenders and the district attorneys assigned for their prosecution, but Sadly, it came off as pretty stale from the beginning. The on-screen chemistry between Scream's Skeetletrich and Ant-Man's Corey Stoll was lackluster. On the other hand, the spin-off shoved the show's biggest stars like Alfred Molina and Terrence Howard in the recurring player status. What looked like an amazing opportunity to expand on the idea behind Law & Order quickly turned into a sad reminder for the fans of the show that they had lost. But just then, the series picked up the slack and started improving. The writing became much better, and the show wrote the dull and dreary character of Ulrich, Regina Hall, and Megan Boone out of the show by the end of Season 1. It also promoted Molina and Howard to full-time status. Unfortunately, it was all too little too late for Law & Order Los Angeles was put on indefinite hold in January 2011 and ultimately ended just after the first season. We do wonder what this spinoff could have become had we given it more time. Guess we'll never know. Next, we have Law & Order Organized Crime. We're not going to lie, Christopher Maloney contributed hugely to the success of Law & Order Organized Crime. Back when a picture of Maloney from the series hit the internet, fans couldn't help but swoon. The man was literally a brief sensation. Through the two seasons of Organized Crime, the show truly embraced Maloney. This spin-off merged the more procedural world of Dick Wolf with the action-packed and sordid world of mob drama, which was admirable, but to be honest, wasn't the show's strong suit, at least in the beginning. Season 1 of Original Crime treaded the waters lightly, dividing the show's focus between the legendary Elliot Stabler and the rogue crime boss Richard Wheatley. It was in Season 2 that the show really picked up the pace and Maloney took center stage. Watching Stabler go undercover in the Albanian mob and coming face to face with a tech-savvy anarchist was inarguably the most exciting part of the spin-off. Many of the fans believed that the show became better once it realized its true criminal potential. We couldn't be happier for that shift in focus because that paved the way for an entire season of crossover with Law & Order SVU. And at number 3, Law & Order Criminal Intent. The highlight of criminal Criminal intent 
intent was Full Metal Jacket's Vincent D'Onofrio. He has rarely delivered less than iconic performances, and his performance in the Law & Order spinoff was no exception. His role as lead detective Robert Gorin gave off more Sherlock Holmes vibes. His bruised psyche and appalling behavior was the show's key draw. Fans absolutely dug his character. How else would you explain the spinoff lasting 10 long seasons with a whopping 195 episodes? What makes Criminal Intent stand out from the rest of the spinoffs is the way it's told. Looking at things from the point of view of criminals really shook up things. From the premeditation to commitment, the series covered every aspect of the crimes being committed in NYC. With its thrilling new take, this Law & Order series lands in the top three of the franchise. Next, at number two, of course, we have Law & Order Special Victims Unit. There are hardly any shows that not only match the brilliance of the original, but also manage to eclipse it, like Frasier, Better Call Saul, and of course, Law & Order Special Victims Unit. Its brilliance didn't overshadow Wolf's original show in terms of quality in general, but it took the series to a whole new level of relevancy. While Law & Order SVU still follows the same framework that gives the show its particular character, it is the show's take on COVID-19 during the last two years that truly make it among the best spin-offs. As the show continues to tackle the health crisis along with organized crimes, it makes room for long form of storytelling on the show, making it more intriguing than ever. You'll find that specifically in season 21 when Olivia Benson goes up against a media tycoon. It's interesting to see how being on air for more than two decades now, SVU still holds its spark. If anything, it has managed to redefine what the franchise can be as it brings difficult conversations about gaslighting, sexual assault, and rape culture to light. This series is hands down one of the best the legal crime saga has to offer and it takes number two on our list. At number one, we have the original Law & Order. Do you think any other series except the original would take the top spot? If it weren't for Law & Order, we wouldn't have the elaborate franchise to begin with. The show, with its rage and spark, gave us a new twist on the crime drama genre. When the series first came out, there were hardly any shows that followed a framework like Law & Order. It gave us a fascinating crime procedural that focused on both sides of the ledger, the police investigation as well as the attorneys who prosecute. Even today, most of the crime shows only focus on the investigation part, and it all ends once the perp is caught, while the legal shows barely give us the backstory. This show puts together officers, lowlifes, prosecutors, and everyday New Yorkers in the best possible way. The original Law & Order ran successfully for 20 long seasons, keeping its fans hooked all through 456 episodes from 1990 to 2010. Now that is an impressive run. The OG cast includes the likes of S. Apatha Merkerson, Sam Waterston, Jory Orbach, Stephen Hill, and Jesse L. Martin. The star-studded cast was one of the reasons the show was so memorable, and that wraps up our video for today, folks. Do you agree with the list? Which was your favorite Law & Order series? Let us know your thoughts in the comments sections down below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.